Am I live? I think I am live. I think I am. Always a little delayed on here. Still trying to figure this stuff out. Good morning. My name is Jocelyn. I am a doctor of physical therapy, specialize in pelvic floor physical therapy, and I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. I am the owner of the Vagina Doc Physical Therapy and Wellness. I am a physical therapist, a coach, a friend, a daughter, a dog mom. And a fun fact about myself is that I, my signature is lipstick. I was literally on here, not on my personal page, filming a workout and it was driving me crazy that I didn't have lipstick on. And I don't know why, it's not for anyone else, it's for me. But I just feel that much like, mm, sassy whenever I have my lipstick on. So that's a fun fact about myself. Shout out to M. Taze for that. And also shout out to Faith Ann uh, from St. Louis. They inspired me to find the right lipstick for me. Anyways, so today I wanted to come on, even though my show is Tuesdays and Thursdays, because I wanted to talk to you about the lessons I have received from crossing the line and how that can help you navigate different areas of your life, specific, more specifically to your physical, physical function and exercise and fitness. Now, disclaimer. When we are given an inch, we take a mile. So when it comes to this COVID-19, I am not referring to this at all. So let's just not go there. But what it means, what I learned from crossing the line, my, and in the intro, I, I shout out my parents. I want to shout out my mom, Loris, and my dad, Jim. Jim's not on here, but, uh, I was the third. I'm the baby. My, I have an older brother and an older sister. My sister's the oldest, brother's the middle, and I'm the baby. And so naturally, my parents were more mellow for, for when I grew up. And um, they were pretty, like, I would tell you back in the day that they were strict, more strict, but they were strict not with what I was allowed and wasn't wasn't allowed to do but they were strict in the, in such a way they didn't really buy me what I wanted I wasn't spoiled which I'm so grateful for now which I uh, I was so bitter when my parents wouldn't buy me all the new limited two clothes or Hollister movement Abercrombie but now I cannot be more grateful where they were lenient is what I was allowed to do, like with my friends, how late I was allowed to stay out at a certain age. Um, when I broke the rules, what they called me out on versus what they didn't call me out on. And I can say that there was a perfect amount of wiggle room because now I know that we there is a lesson to be learned when you cross the line. And sometimes, like if you are too, if I, if someone was too strict with me, then when I got out of that situation, I just went crazy. And then if, if there was no boundaries, then I think that I would have be misbehaved in a different way. And I forget what that misbehavior is. Like as a dog owner, I know I have to set boundaries for, for Louie or he starts misbehaving. It's kind of similar for teenagers and just people in general. Um, I also want to shout out to my parents for the love they and the attention they always gave me. I mean, not in an, in an obnoxious way. Like, my dad would spend hours with me outside retrieving basketballs. I, we would literally be shooting basketball for hours, and he would, he would just stay there with me. He would throw, when I was a softball player, back in forever ago, like, when I was in elementary school, we would be, he'd be throwing like high, like, I don't even know what they're called, like high balls, not the alcoholic beverage, but way up in the air where I had to get underneath it. 
And it would, we would do that until it was dark and I couldn't even see the ball and I would still be catching it. We'd play, play highlights, like football with the neighborhood kids. I'll never forget that. And then my mom always was there as a listening ear and never in a judgy way. Like just, I can't describe it, but she was my person that, would give me the lessons on relationships with friends, with boys, with teachers. So I think it was the time factor that was really, really inf- made me want to listen to that, even though they made me mad sometimes, a lot of time, a, a lot of time. So wiggle room. I'm not going to share with you all the things that I did as a teenager, but let's just say I My teachers thought I was an angel, but I was not an angel by any means. I think they thought that I was an angel because I excelled in athletics and it, I mean, to a high, like really, really excelled in athletics. I was a nice person, didn't disrupt class too much, and also did fine in school. (laughs) And, um, But what they didn't know was that I just was good at hiding it. Now, I crossed the line. Like, I would sneak out at night. I would do things that I shouldn't be doing. But it's normal to explore and to try new things and different things as a teenager and as as an adolescent. I have the word spoken by someone I interviewed for my podcast. However, it is okay to do that under the right guidance so that you know when the line, like when it's, you don't cross the line or it's just a tiptoe and then back or maybe a one baby step over and then come back. I think I, I always knew when it wasn't okay to cross the line. I knew when it was like me sneaking out was whenever I took like maybe six inches over the line and then came back. Um, there were times when I just tiptoed and then went back and then a little bit further and then back, but I, I always came back and I always had a sense of this is or isn't a good time, but I can say I did, I had that insight because I had guidance. My parents were just, they, I don't know what they did because they made me mad in so many ways, but they were the best parents I could ever have really asked for in terms of getting me to where I am now in my perspectives, even though I've stripped away a lot of their perspectives, but they, they build the foundation, which is that, which is all that matters because we are supposed to become our own individuals. And I definitely have. So how does that relate to you? Well, when I'm working with my patients, I think that they are not sure if they should be doing something or that is outside the realm of rehab or is outside the realm of, yeah, let's just stick with rehab because it's easy. It's an easy one to talk about. So let's say you're seeing me and you're in my coaching, my coach, new coaching program, postpartum coaching program. Um, one common question is, can I continue to do my workouts? And I am not their therapist. I'm their coach. So that's number one. I have to make that clear. So I'm the, there. I set forth the boundaries and the rules of the coaching program. But I let them make the decision based on the tools that I have given them to make their own decisions. If it is okay to proceed forward or not. There is going to be a line. And I'm not sure what that line is in some regards. I can tell them lines like, okay, leakage is not appropriate for the most part. Um, I can give them guidance, like if this results in Valsalva or breath holding or heaviness at the end or pain, that's you know that's the line you don't cross or this is what how much leeway you have there and this is your decision-making process when those times arise 
so that they have the tools to do what I did when I had the, the temptations. Some of those temptations for me were fine and great lessons that carried me forward in now. Some of those lessons were great lessons, even though that they didn't serve me at the time. They, I got in trouble, or I, did, I got hurt, or something of the sense of, of that. But they have to learn that from themselves. You guys have to learn how, what your line is and how do you cross it. You've got to learn for yourself in what principles are you following to make a decision whether it, you tiptoe the line, you take a little step over the line then come back, or you take a leap over the line. The biggest thing is understanding the importance of coming back, but if you don't know what your boundaries are, if you don't know what your, your principles are, you have no, you don't know then. But when you do, and you know the line, there is so much value to how you cross it, or when you cross it, and the magnitude you cross it. So let's just talk about now my experience with alcohol or illegal substance is like alcohol before age 21. Or, yeah. Um, We all know in the States you cannot drink, it's illegal to drink before the age of 21. I will admit I may have done that, maybe in the presence of, it was always safe, but I knew that, I knew the principles. My parents said, look, it's not, your body isn't mature enough to handle it. Your, you might make a bad decision that you regret. You could say yes to something you would typically say no to. This, which could result in life-changing things. Like you can become pregnant if you decide to consent. Or you can decide to get behind the wheel with someone who shouldn't, you shouldn't, or get in a car with someone you shouldn't be getting in a car with. Or you might choose to do something even more illegal. So I knew my principles and I knew, like I had to learn for myself. I, I really, like those were times where you just tiptoed the line and then came back. But um, it's normal for kids to want to explore, right? My parents never gave me the permission to do that. However, I can tell you, I did not go wild at, like, I didn't, I knew my boundaries moving forward whenever it was legal. So, how does this relate to exercise? Well, I told you about my postpartum coaching program and how I give them those principles. I tell them basically what I just told you, all the rules related to the legal substances this is this is a different frame they know their body and now i give them the the assessment process of to decide you know to drive their decision making but let's say if you are not part of my coaching program and you're just picking out a workout well you need to explore. You need to decide, hey, let me, is this for me? Is it not for me? Is this serving me? Is this filling my cup or is it not? Do I leave this motivated, excited, happy, energized, uh, ready to start the day or ready to go back home and be uh, serve my kids, serve my, my partner? Uh, am I ready to go back to work and be more productive? Or is what I'm doing so intense that it just knocks me on my butt? Does it make me angry at myself and beat myself up? Does it make me uh, depleted? Does it make me just, am I so just out of tune because I'm in pain? In that case, you have to go back to the drawing board. You cross the line a little bit too far. Maybe you, for, for whatever reason, the reason doesn't matter. It's just how you 
go about the decision making process of how far you crossed and do you cross it again or do you stay behind the line or do you just tiptoe the line you've got to learn for yourself especially if you're an adult kids is different um so whenever i am a, a, a physical therapist to someone i'm their physical therapist i have guidelines and and rules particularly post-operatively and i set those and i'm like look you follow these rules you you're an adult you can you can choose not to but ultimately here here's the risks here's the benefits of what of different things and then they have to make the decision i ultimately can't stop them for the most part but then let's say you have a put your post-operative hip surgery you there's not hard set factors or there's a lot with even pelvic health and women's health, men's health, gender health, that there is no research to serve as a guiding to set rules, to set boundaries. So we have to explore. You have to decide, you know, whether or not these rank, like let's say there is research out there. You have to decide if the range of which is published out there is fits you so for me i have never like when it comes to heart rate and fitness heart rate and fitness never really translated for me so whenever i was participating in research studies in college i was definitely up there one of the highest level of fitness but my heart rate was showing that i was a really low level of fitness so you have to decide whether those values are something for you to follow and at those objective ranges. Sometimes we don't fit into the range of what people would treat, you know, but sometimes you still have symptoms and you, you don't have to do this yourself, but you and your medical team have to decide, okay, do we cross this line or do we not? Whether that's to treat or not to treat. Same thing goes for, for rehab. We're not robots. We can't be driven by protocols. There has to be some room for exploration, for learning. But again, don't, this isn't for COVID. This isn't for anything medical. It's more so for exercise and fitness and, and rehab. But um, I, I feel like my own, as a recap, I feel like my own experience of crossing the line has taught me the value of, of under, of because I came back because of boundaries and rules that my parents set forth, I know as a professional and as a as ruler of myself now that I need to be aware of my boundaries and my principles and the rules first. And then uh, that's how I decide whether or not to cross the line or not. But with my patients, the same thing. I, they rely on me as their, to guide them. My clients, I'm coaching. They rely on me to set those boundaries and those standards, those rules. So I have to be crystal clear about them so that they can make the decision. Cause ultimately they're with them all day. I'm with them maybe once or twice a week or less. 30 to 60 minutes at a time. So what lines are you going to cross? And when you do cross them, what principles or boundaries guiding are guiding you to decide whether you stay behind the line, you tiptoe the line, you jump over the line, you take a step, come back, how far you're over the line, when you come back. I like to work with people that are brave enough to explore within reason and that are wise in that they learn the lesson but they come back and then the next they become stronger and stronger not the people that do it for attention like don't jump over the line if you're my patient you jump over the line and then you complain you're in pain I that's your call that I know I'm gonna work really hard to set those boundaries and all of that I can't control you and I'm not going to feed in to any spiral that or 
whatever you're doing when you are looking for attention. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you got something from this, comment, take away. Um, if you watch this on the replay, comment replay. If this is something that spoke to you and you want to reach out, feel free to reach out to me via messenger, via email, jocelynconleypt at gmail.com, via phone, 480-980-0367, or uh, check out my website, fill out uh, a form to chat over the phone, um, or a virtual discovery session www.thevaginapt.com and I will see you next time. Have a wonderful Friday.